Welcome to week eight of the ketogenic diet. After eight weeks of extensive searching, I have finally found 99% dark chocolate. Um, most stores will have 90% with Lindette, um, which is good. It's pretty decent, but I really wanted to try the 99% dark chocolate. I was actually a little disappointed though because the carbs are not really that much of a difference um, and the taste is pretty substantial. The 99, just that 9% jump from 90 to 99 really adds um, a grainy taste to it. So for anyone on the, the keto diet or interested in the keto diet but they don't want to give up chocolate, uh, you know, you can go 99, save some carbs, but 90 may be where it's at. I still like the fat bombs though. The fat bombs I did were probably probably the best as far as carb wise goes. But I just wanted to mention that because I, I really did spend eight weeks trying to find um, some 99% dark chocolate. I know Lindette makes one. Lindette, Lindette. I don't know how you say that, but that's the chocolate manufacturer. Um, but they don't ever have them in stores. You gotta you gotta order them. So I may do that. I even checked Whole Foods. Couldn't find them there either. That's from World Market, which is next to my Whole Foods. It's not terrible. It's not the worst thing you could eat. It's definitely a far cry from milk chocolate, but you know it is it is um, it is lower in carbs. So I'm gonna try to keep this video at about 15 minutes. I know I say that every week, and every week I go over, but um, I'm binge watching Teen Wolf on Amazon, so I really got to get back to that. This week, aside from mentioning the dark chocolate, the only, uh, I want to talk about two things. Richard had said something funny um, in the last podcast we did for Neanderthal Radio. He mentioned how, uh, and he said it jokingly, of course, but he mentioned how uh, culty, like, I think he said, like, it pisses him off people talk about the ketogenic diet, and he was joking, but he mentioned how culty it is, and um, he's actually very, very spot on with that. He, you know, after I, I agreed with him, he said he was joking, but um, it, it was a pretty spot on comment. It, it reminds me a little bit of like CrossFit or Paleo or, you know, I guess anything that, that somebody does that's part of a group um, and that's a little bit difficult for normal people to do. I'm not, not in any way saying I'm accomplishing something that nobody else can accomplish or that nobody listening could accomplish or aren't doing themselves. But it does take um, a fair bit of, you know, self-control and dedication to try to do the ketogenic diet. Just because, you know, the some people don't agree with with all the benefits, which is, you know, fine. It teaches on. Um, so with that though, it does take it does take dedication, and you know, people will try to dissuade you, say the results aren't there, and those that believe it follow it. Some try to follow it and they can't stick to it, but it does create a like a culty like like following amongst people who are able to do it. Same thing with CrossFit. A lot of even very fit people they can't do CrossFit. It's very difficult, and so the people that are able to do it they tend to cluster together. I've also seen it with Jiu-Jitsu. People that do Jiu-Jitsu seem to you know it becomes consuming. You know you you you, you spend a lot of time doing that or thinking about that or. With, with the ketogenic diet, for instance, I spent a lot of time looking at different things and um, it probably puts a little tiny extra pressure that I try to do these videos and even though I don't really take a lot of myself serious at all, um, I try to come up with new things to talk about. I don't want to talk about the same thing every week, so I'm, I'm very much in the different forums and seeing what people are saying and what people are trying and I just got our Instagram up and going and I started posting some stuff on that and I posted one picture just to see and I immediately got a lot of feedback on, on one picture, like a lot of feedback and in a very short amount of time. And it's all people that follow keto lifestyle. And so that's the kind of point that I wanted to talk about that is um, there's a there's an not only is there a lot of information out there, but we're blessed to live in an age where where we can reach out to people we don't know, strangers, and we can find things in common. Um, I think Dr. Drew had joked that like He's you know, a doctor who's formerly part of what used to be Loveline, rest in peace, Loveline. 
Um, but he joked that what would it have been like a hundred years ago if you were one of those people that were into like foot fetish or like poop and pee play or whatever they call that. Uh, this this podcast just took a turn fast. <laughs> but uh, he, he was saying that you would have just had to keep it to yourself because nobody was going to go out there and put themselves on the line and just take a shot because they risk ridicule. And uh, not that you'd be ridiculed for following the ketogenic diet, but, you know, a lot of your friends aren't going to be able to understand that. My friends don't understand it, you know, in truth. And that's the beauty of being able to reach out to people and the culty like following that things like CrossFit have and things like, you know, the paleo diet and the keto diet because a lot of people understand that one, it's a little difficult to really get, get the hang of what you're doing and to really understand what you're doing. And, you know, from my experience, I've, I've been lucky enough to everyone I meet is very helpful. They're very nice. And people just seem to want to share information and help each other out. So I think the community aspect of it is awesome. And so if anyone's, you know, thinking about it and just, you know, when I, when I thought about doing this, I had just known a couple of people that did it, you know, that it, I thought, you know, it'd be cool to try. And so I just kind of jumped into it, but I didn't have any, any of what you would call like mentor. And then what I've kind of started to realize is I, I did have mentors, but the mentors just aren't what you think they are. The mentors are your peers. They're just people that along the way give you pieces of advice, like somebody that told me about pork rinds or somebody that mentioned 99% dark chocolate. Or you, I just get mentioned things or I ask people about things, you know, I've had conversations with, with some people and you get some good, you get some good information. So I think that's kind of the, the building blocks of, you know, who we are in a sense is our ability to reach out and, and connect with one another and to be able to learn from each other and to, you know, mentor in, in a non-traditional mentor role. And I think that's great. So I just wanted to mention that, like the, there is a great network for anyone interested in, in joining, you know, or not joining, but eating ketogenic and it almost sounds culty now, like I'm going to offer you guys a cup of lemonade or a cup of Kool-Aid and um, I promise you I'm not. There's carbs in Kool-Aid. Um, but with that said, you know, if anyone reaches out to me, I'll help where I can. I don't know much, to be honest with you. I've only been doing this eight weeks. There's people that have been doing it for years. But don't be afraid. Don't be nervous to jump out there. If it's something you want to try, just jump in with both feet. Somebody commented on to yes, yesterday to me on um, Instagram. They had said that, you know, because I had mentioned that I tried to make the ice cream and it was a, it was a bitter failure. And it's, they just kind of commented, like, that's 90% of what Keto Lifestyle is, is just trial by error. You try to find things and you, you work your way through it. So I, I thought that was a really cool aspect. And I wanted to share that just because um, I think it can be inspiring for anyone who's who's looking to, to try this out but who's afraid that you know they don't know how to even begin. Just Reddit has a really good theme. I've 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 mentioned Reddit before. They they have an awesome forum there of just keto people who who give tips and advice and it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so there's a good community out there if if you're interested. That's all I'm gonna say about that. And uh, email me if you'd like to join the cult. The second thing I wanted to talk about this week. And it's, it's a little off topic of, of the, the keto diet. <clears throat> I mean, eight weeks in, I don't have a ton of new things. Like I talked last week about the health aspects and I talked about, um, you know, feeling good. And I talked about a lot of the different things I could talk about. The weight loss is, is, is you know, steady at this point. So there's nothing really exciting to talk about there. So I, I wanted to talk a little bit about perspective. Um, I've done that in the past, but I wanted to talk about something in specifically. My wife had showed me a video. I don't know who these people were, um, and I'm not in any way doing it like in a disrespectful way, but I think maybe they were part of BuzzFeed, and they, it, was a, it was a funny video. They, they reenacted famous photo shoots of like Shanning Tatum and Triple um, X, or not Triple X, uh, Magic Mike, Double XL, or whatever it was. Um, and they, they had Ronaldo's famous cover, the soccer player, and they were all kind of, you know, doing it as humor. And then they, they all said in the end, 
and one of the guys specifically said it like this is not a realistic body and the one guy was said in and who was doing Ronaldo's character in the photo shoot he basically said that you know you can't have a body like this if you're a normal person that Ronaldo can only have this body because he's a millionaire and he gets paid and he's a professional athlete and I've 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 heard this theme going around a lot and that's what I want to talk about I'm not in, in, in great shape, so I'm in no way acting like I know everything. So please, I don't want, I don't want anybody to take it that way. But I've heard this theme becoming more and more common, and it's, it's kind of in line with the whole, you know, love the body you're in, and people who, who are saying, like, I'm big, and I'm proud, and I'm beautiful. And I think that, like, kind of self, um, self-image, maybe, or whatever it's called, having a good body image is I think important for becoming healthy but I think we also start to create an excuse there and I believe that's dangerous I think it's dangerous when when somebody who's very overweight you know they they say oh well I'm I'm beautiful and I'm you know perfect in my body and the, the honest truth is is being overweight and obese is unhealthy I knew somebody you know she was one of the the, the loveliest people that I had ever met and she was overweight and she ended up, you know, dying because of that. And it's very sad because, you know, it could have all been prevented. Just simply becoming healthy could have been, could have prevented that. And I've, I've gained a lot of weight and I'm, and I'm losing the weight now. And as I lose the weight, I was telling my wife last night, like, man, I feel incredible. And I don't, I've only lost just over 40 pounds and. I told her like, man, and I still have like, depending on what weight exactly I want to get to, but I'm thinking I have at least somewhere in the region of, of 80 to maybe more, depending on what weight I'm trying to get at and how much muscle, how, how big muscle wise I'm trying to get again. But the point is, is I, I started thinking like, I've only lost like maybe say a third or, you know, just somewhere in a third, let's just say, I don't know the exact math of the weight I need to weight to lose now imagine if you lose the the rest how amazing you'll feel if I feel this good after only losing a third of the, the extra weight you know and it's it's sad to me that that people rob themselves of that and I feel like these things are becoming we're making excuses for becoming unhealthy or, or not trying to attain you know the best peak health we can be in I hear I hear people say that a lot like oh that's steroids and in truth I've said it myself some of these motherfuckers are on steroids. I watched with the guys last week after our podcast. We went and watched the, the whatever the fuck that was, uh, Civil War, Iron Man, Avengers, whatever, whatever the new one was. And like half of those motherfuckers are on steroids now. That's a fact. It's true. But not that's not to dismiss that you can get a body like that. Like I think some people said like, well, that's steroids. And then they don't ever put in the energy or the time. Um, to build a body so when these when these guys in this video were kind of they weren't mocking it But they were just kind of like admiring it from afar when they were saying oh Channing Tatum or especially Ronaldo uh, One it's like yeah, that's an incredible body, but normal people can't get that body and I don't believe that's true Just like I don't believe that that people who are big really believe I'm so beautiful inside like I feel like it's a lie we tell ourselves that way we don't have to risk anything if you if you just accept the fact that you're big and you convince yourself that you're beautiful then you don't have to try to lose the weight and fail you give yourself an excuse to not try and the same thing happens when 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 you look at somebody like if you know if you want Ronaldo's body and you say well I, that's just not realistic and that can never be done and you may not get it there hundred percent some of that may be genes but you could get pretty close I think just about anybody any guy, any woman can get close to their idea of body weight that they want, even if it's some image, assuming it hasn't been photoshopped. But it, it takes a ton of effort and it takes you, you know, dismantling all of your excuses. You can't have excuses like, oh, well, I, because I have to go to work. That didn't mean you had to eat fast food for lunch. Do you know what I'm saying? And when I see things like that and I see people, you know, glorifying obese images, and I see people making excuses for why they can't, you know, create the perfect body. It just kind of annoys me because it's, it's simply an excuse. It's simply somebody 
being too afraid to try, too afraid to just go out there and, and say, hey, I'm going to, I've been eating this way my entire life, and this is the shape I'm in. Whether, even if you're not in terrible shape, but if you're not in the shape you want to be in, you look at the way you've been living, and maybe the way you're living is not conducive to that, and it doesn't mean you have to become a millionaire. You just may have to sacrifice some things, and you may have to really put in the effort. Like, I see anybody that's that's great at things, they all share one thing in common. They all refuse to quit, and they all put in the effort. Every single one of them. You know, Michael Jordan talked about how he was always the first guy in the gym and the last guy out of the gym. You know, and he wasn't the tallest player. He may not even have been the most naturally talented, but he put in the work. And you see that in boxers. Like, everyone gives Floyd Mayweather shit. They say, oh, he's cocky, he's this, he's that. I've said it many times. He's probably one of the few athletes in boxing that you can find that's in peak shape 24-7. And that's what champions are made of. Like, if you want to be a champion in your life, you have to throw away all your excuses and you have to really commit and dedicate to yourself. It's not even to anybody else. Working out in fitness and health, it's, it's amazing because it's one of the few relationships that you will ever be in where you're going to get back exactly what you put in. The exact amount of effort you put in is the results you're going to get back. So if you sit on the couch and you watch Biggest Loser and you keep talking about tomorrow I'm going to start my diet, tomorrow I'm going to start my diet, and you're overweight and you tell yourself big is beautiful, these are just, you're not doing anything. You're, you're giving up on yourself. And that's the same thing to somebody who's, you know, scrawny, but they want to be buff and they just look at pictures and they say, oh, steroids or, oh, it's because he's a millionaire. I could never do that. You just, you're psyching yourself out, you know, you're, you're psyching yourself out of the fight before you even put your gloves on. So put your gloves on, get committed and, you know, fight. This is your life. You can be as great as you want to be or you can fail. And that is completely your decision. A lot of things in life aren't up to you. Your finances, a lot of that is out of your hands. It takes years and years, but your health and your life is, is in your control. And it's your destiny, man. Live it how you want to. That's all I want to talk about this week. Uh, thank you for listening. I actually did a decent job of keeping it shorter, so pat myself on the back for that one. Um, like I said, in Instagram is is up. I think it's just Ryan N. Gray, R-Y-A-N-N-G-R-A-Y-8-6. Uh, I think that's my Instagram. I'm going to see if I can tie it to the website. Uh, but I'm starting to put some keto stuff up there for anyone interested in the, the diet. That's kind of really all I'm using Instagram for at this purpose, at this point. Sorry. Um, so, as always, you know, if you have questions or concerns or comments or anything, let me know. I'll try to help you if I can. And if I can't, try to point you in the right direction. Thank you for listening. Uh, goodbye.